Argus Filch was a squib and the caretaker of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry since 1973. He patrolled the school corridors with his cat Mrs Norris, trying to catch students breaking the rules in an attempt to incriminate them. This is the life of Argus Filch. There is little known about Filch's early life. He was born to at least one wizarding parent shortly before 1956 in a small town in the British Isles. Despite his magical parentage, Filch was a squib, meaning he could not perform magic, something that devastated him and created a bitterness towards the magically gifted. In 1973, Argus joined the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry's faculty, succeeding Apollyon Pringle as caretaker. Filch, fueled by his bitterness at not being able to use magic, waged a constant war against the students and Peeves, the resident poltergeist. He disliked the students and constantly hassled them over the littlest infraction, taking delight in reading through and gathering the detention slips. By the end of the 1970s, Filch had already filled out at least 1,056 boxes with punishment records. He frequently patrolled the hallways at night time, hunting down students wandering out of bed and looking for excuses to give them detention. In his many years as caretaker, Argus had learned all about the castle's secret passageways and hidden doors better than anyone, or at least he thought. Filch lived in a small, windowless office containing filing cabinets with detailed records of all the students he had disciplined, something he felt extremely proud of. A highly polished collection of chains and shackles hung on the wall behind his desk, once used when the more extreme methods of punishment were permitted. He always begged Headmaster Albus Dumbledore to let him suspend students by their ankles from the ceiling, much to Dumbledore's dismissal. In the 1977-78 school year, Filch confiscated the Marauders map, probably on a tip-off from Severus Snape, after the Marauders were in violation of school rules. Filch stored the map in a cabinet marked confiscated and highly dangerous. It is doubtful that he knew what the map was, as he was a squib, and could not make the map work properly. The map was kept in his office until Fred and George Weasley stole it during their first year at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry after being hauled into his office for letting off a dung bomb in the corridor. On the very first morning at Hogwarts, September 2nd, 1991, Harry Potter and Ronald Weasley managed to get on Filch's wrong side. Filch found them trying to force their way through the door of the out of bounds corridor on the third floor. Despite their truthful claims that they were lost, he did not believe them and threatened to lock them in the dungeons. However, they were saved by Queerness Quirrell, who vouched for them while passing by, leaving Filch angry and frustrated. He continued to keep a focus on Harry and Ron, and Hermione included, catching the trio several times further throughout the year. In the 1992-93 school year, Argus tried to improve his status as a squib, using a quick spell course. However, as Filch had no inherent magical powers, this was of little use. After the Gryffindor Quidditch team training on October 24th, Mrs Norris saw Harry Potter, who was covered in dirt. Filch was then alerted to Harry and hauled him to his office. However, while momentarily distracted by Peeves the Poltergeist, he learned that Harry had read his letter about the Quickspell course. Filch was furious and kicked Harry out of his office, trying to convince him that the letter was not his and ordering him not to tell anyone. During the school year, unbeknownst at the time, the Basilisk wandered around the castle corridors, attacking people, animals and ghosts. The first individual to be attacked was Mrs Norris, Filch's cat, whom he had a very close relationship with. The cat was found petrified under a message written on the wall saying, The Chamber of Secrets has been opened. Enemies of the air, beware. Causing him tremendous stress and concern. He was convinced that Harry Potter was the one who petrified her, as he knew that Filch was a squib. However, Dumbledore managed to convince him that Harry was not responsible, as he could not have performed such dark magic, being just 12 years old at the time. After the attack, Filch frequently paced the corridor in which it had taken place, as though hoping for the attacker to return. He even put a chair against the wall to keep guard there. During this time, he became more vicious, aggressive and unfair than ever and wrote students up for small things like breathing loudly and looking happy. However, at the end of the year, when attending the end of term feast, Filch reunited with his cat Mrs Norris. She was cured, 
by the administration of Professor Snape's Mandrake restorative draught, brewed with Professor Sprout's Mandrakes. He learned that the one who petrified Mrs Norris was the memory of Tom Riddle, the one who controlled Salazar Slytherin's Basilisk. In the 1993-94 school year, alleged mass murderer Sirius Black broke into the castle and tried to enter the Gryffindor Tower. This resulted in the destruction of the fat lady's portrait. Filch helped secure the castle on Professor Dumbledore's instruction, lowering the portcullis and bolting the front doors of the clock tower. Filch searched both the dungeons, the astronomy tower and the aulery but found no sign of him. Filch was also charged with restoring the fat lady's portrait and he did so expertly. Afterwards, he bustled around the corridors boarding up everything from tiny cracks in the walls to mouse holes. Before the start of the 1994-95 school term, Filch extended the list of forbidden objects within the school premises so that it included 437 items, including screaming yo-yos, fanged frisbees and ever-bashing boomerangs. With the school receiving guests from rival schools in the Triwizard Tournament, Filch underwent an extra thorough cleaning of the castle and acted ferociously to any students who forgot to wipe their shoes. On one occasion, he terrified a pair of first year girls into hysterics. He attended the Yule Ball on Christmas night where he stood alone with Mrs Norris in his arms, humming the waltz tunes to his cat. Despite his usual hunting of wrongdoers, Filch was relatively quiet for the rest of the year. As part of Minister Fudge's campaign to discredit Albus Dumbledore and Harry Potter, the Ministry of Magic instated Dolores Umbridge as defence against the Dark Arts Professor. Prior to the start of the school term, Filch fastened a list of forbidden items to his office door in an attempt to make students read it. If there was any rule that angered Filch more than anything when broken, it was the use of magic in between classes. He constantly reminded Dumbledore about the students adhering to this rule. With the appointment of Umbridge, he realised that the Ministry of Magic was going to interfere at Hogwarts that school year, and he clapped enthusiastically. Umbridge was a sadistic woman who, like Filch, enjoyed torturing and punishing students. Thus, the caretaker started to support Umbridge and follow her orders. Filch proudly hung copies of the educational decrees in the entrance hall. He was also probably the one to affix the notices with the decree on the notice boards in the common rooms. Filch also assisted Umbridge when she had Trelawney sacked. It's not known whether he enjoyed this moment as he done with the rest of his orders from Umbridge, but it remains to be seen. Under Umbridge, he walked around in an extremely good mood. He hummed creakily under his breath with the prospect of the changes Umbridge had announced. He was going to be permitted to bring back old punishments like giving students whippings and she had also asked the Minister for Magic to sign an order for the expulsion of Peeves from the school, much to Filch's delight. However, the counterattack against Umbridge was now in full force. Much of the student body opposed her and Filch. With the constant rebellious nature of the students causing pranks and attacks about the school, the method of whipping was actually approved under Umbridge. Due to all those misdeeds, Filch prowled the corridors with a horsewhip ready in his hands desperate to catch students in the act, but the problem was that there were now so many of them he never knew which way to turn. He was aided by the inquisitorial squad, but they were also attacked. After her ordeal with the centaurs, Umbridge departed the school, embarrassed, shocked and humiliated. Filch brought her luggage as she was stopped by a mob of Daily Prophet reporters who took pictures of her leaving. Filch was reportedly miserable as he thought Umbridge was the best thing to ever happen at Hogwarts. With the second wizarding war ongoing, Filch was charged with checking the students and the processions for dark objects with the secrecy sensors upon their arrival at the school. He also had the responsibility of checking all the elves to prevent potentially harmful objects from entering the premises. In July, Argus Filch attended Dumbledore's funeral in an ancient black suit and tie, reeking of mothballs, paying his respects for the man who despite their opposing views on student punishment, gave him employment as a squib. In the 1997-98 school year, the Ministry of Magic was taken over by Lord Voldemort and his Death Eaters. By the 1st of September 1997, Severus Snape was made Headmaster of Hogwarts, while his fellow Death Eaters Electo and Amicus Carroll became the Muggle Studies and Defence Against the Dark Arts teachers respectively. The Carrows were put in charge of all discipline and punishments, which were violent, including beatings and placing students under the Cruciatus Curse. Filch lost some of his duties, as punishment seemed to be given out exclusively by the Carrows and Severus Snape. Although he was moody, grumpy and loved dishing out punishment, 
Filch was no coward. The caretaker stayed in the castle during the battle and he participated also. He stayed to aid the Hogwarts forces with his extensive knowledge of the castle layout and secret passages. During the first stage of the battle, Filch was left with a deep gash in his left arm. And in the one hour long interruption of the battle, Filch was at the Great Hall, where his injuries were treated by Horace Slughorn. His lack of self-worth seen him turn his loneliness into an obsession for a cat, and taking any joy in causing misery, a reflection of what he was experiencing himself. However, he supported those who stood against Voldemort, and bravely remained in the castle to help fight, perhaps showing his true character, the man the world should have seen all along, if only he had been magically gifted. That is all for today's video everyone, thank you very much for watching, make sure you're following me on Instagram at InstaDNJ in order to participate in the one giveaway next week. Thank you very much again for watching and have a great day.